Yes, on halfway around the world. Too bad, I have to go home. Too bad. Because <laughs> it'll be a long way back, won't it? Hopefully, I'll come back someday with my family. I would love for them to be able to come and be in service with you and experience Singapore with you and mostly experience the presence of God with you. He's a wonderful Savior. I'm going to talk tonight real quickly about the five obstacles of prayer. You know, people always seem to have obstacles when it comes to praying. <laughs> things that hinder them, things that keep them from praying. There were two pr pioneer people of prayer that I have read after, John Henry Newman and Andrew Bonar, both gave hours a day to prayer. Every day, never missing. Uh, Brother Willoughby was telling me the other day we were talking about Sister Jenny in China and how she spends hours a day in prayer. G.A. Mangan, Brother Anthony's father, all my life I have known that man spends at least two hours a day in prayer, if not more. You know, there is nothing unusual about this when you talk to these kind of people. They never think that that's something that's unusual because it becomes devotional habits for them. And then there are some people that are newfound to Christianity that I am finding it's no problem for them to spend hours in prayer because they're hungry for him. You know, despite our exceedingly busy, busy, busy lives, it seems like that these people can spend many, many hours in prayer. I have a personal intercessor who lives in Toronto, Canada. She gave up an executive position with IBM, flying all over the world. She's been to Singapore many times, picked up in limousines, wined and dined by the finest, making some of the biggest deals for IBM, making a lot of money. She gave all of it up to become a prayer warrior. She lives in a very, very small, small apartment in Toronto, Canada. Lives very meagerly now just because she wanted more time to pray. Unfortunately, this is not common. <laughs> And it perplexes us sometimes understanding how people can do this. You know, some people that have been Christians for many years are still in preschool when it comes to prayer. <laughs> but the whole spiritual progress of your life and my life depends on learning how to pray. So I want to talk about five obstacles to prayer. I'm going to quickly go through four of them, and then we'll spend a little time on the fifth one. The first obstacle that I want to talk to you about tonight is the obstacle of time. <laughs> obstacles are many to prayer, but I'm going to tell you what most of them are is excuses. You know, we complain about the busy lives that give us no time for prayer, but it's a very shallow evasion because it's amazing how you can find time to do other things that are important to you. No one deeply in love fails to find time to talk to the one that they love. So time really isn't the problem. You know what the problem really is? Love. We say, oh, I love you, Jesus. But when it bites in to our schedule and our time, do we show our love? Jesus stole time from sleep to pray. 
John Wesley, who was one of the great founders of our Christian movement today, got up every morning at 4 o'clock so he would have time to pray. Francis Asbury got up every morning at 5 because they felt like hours had to be spent before they could pray, before they could do anything. Time can be found, but you know what? Our priorities have to be rearranged. And I want to challenge you after this meeting to start somewhere. If it's not but 15 to 30 minutes a day, start somewhere. Because even that little investment of time will bring vast returns. You know, you, you, I can stand up here and say they spend two or three hours a day and you're like, there's no way. <laughs> you're kind of like mother trying that first prayer meeting when she was going to pray an hour and made it ten minutes. You know, and you're thinking, man, there's just no way I can ever get up to that. Start somewhere. Don't look at that two or three hours and say, well, I'll just never do it. Start with 15 or 20, 30 minutes. Just start somewhere. Second obstacle is the obstacle of place. Wouldn't it be wonderful if everybody had a home big enough, large enough, most wonderful enough to have your own private prayer room built into your home? <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not the way it is. A lot of people live in overcrowded homes and overcrowded places, and privacy is hard to find. So I hear them say, I just can't find a place to pray. And we complain about this, and it prevents us from having time to pray. Say this with me. No more time excuse. No more place excuse. You know what? You can leave. If your house is crowded and you can't find any quiet time, you can leave 10, 15 minutes earlier for work. Find a park somewhere. Find some bench somewhere. Stop and pray. You know what? If you can't find a quiet place, you can build a place in your heart, if nothing else, where you can retreat in the middle of noise in a crowded room, in a bus, in a workplace, your mind can learn by practice to be deaf to distractions. Right. Have you ever sat and talked to somebody that you were really interested in talking to and listening to what they had to say and there's all this other stuff going on and you didn't even hear it? Right. You see, that can happen with you and God. There's no place excuse. Wherever you meet Jesus is your place. You know, when my kids were small, we lived in much more crowded conditions than we do now. I would have to either get up very early in the morning before I got them up, or I would have to stay up at night after I put them to bed. I'll tell you something else I did. I would retreat and hide in the bathtub. Because nobody bothered me there. And hey, naked I came into this world, and naked will I leave this world. God was not embarrassed because I was praying in the bathtub. You can find a place to pray. The third obstacle is the obstacle of tiredness. Anybody tired? We all live tired. Some people say they're just too tired to pray. Usually, these are the people that wait until bedtime after a too busy day, and then they are too tired. Can I say this? Please don't be irreverent to your prayer time. Don't give God only what's left over. Reverence demands that we pray before we're too weary to pray. Number four, mental obstacles. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, lack of imagination is also a huge obstacle to prayer. Sanctified imagination would revolutionize most people's prayer lives. 